Hello, hello, my loves. Welcome back to another Tutorial Tuesday. Just like last week, I'm using a reference photo from Sarah Renee Clark. If you missed that video, click the link in the description below to watch my tutorial for how I mixed up this custom palette. I hope you enjoy the video and be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can see what I've got coming next. All right, how are y'all doing today? I'm feeling pretty good. Today's a beautiful sunshiny day here in Pittsburgh and I am so excited to do this painting. I'm just gonna finish smoothing out my background color, which is one part white house paint mixed with two parts Floetrol and a bit of water. Then I'll start layering my dirty pour cups. I'm also gonna torch my background. This just helps get rid of any bubbles that are under that back layer. It'll keep the bubbles from popping up later in my painting. All right, now on to layering our dirty pour cup. I'm gonna start off by adding a small layer of white paint, the same paint that I used for the background color. And then I will slowly pour in the other colors one by one down the side of the cup to keep the colors from mixing up too much and getting muddied. When layering your colors, you don't want to put opposing colors next to each other because they'll cause mud. What I mean by that is that red and green are opposite each other on the color wheel. So if you put those next to each other, they're going to cause a grayish color and um, that's not going to be very pretty. So you'll notice before I add in the pink, I put in a layer of white right next to the green. This will help minimize the muddying of my colors.
You'll notice I don't add any silicone to my paints. Um, I wasn't getting very good results when adding silicone. I always ended up with really tiny cells or just really weird stuff going on in my paintings. I find that I get much better cells just from Floetrol and water mixed into my paint. All right, now that these are finished up, I'm gonna set them aside and let any air bubbles rise to the top. This will help create some cool cells. Um, and then I'm going to fill in any divots in this background paint and level it out and then torch it one last time to get rid of any last bubbles that have floated to the top. I like to use tweezers to pull out any 
bumps or clumps or hairs or anything like that. This will help reduce the bumpiness of the finished product. All right, time to flip our cups. Ready? One, two, three. I like to tap the top of the cups just to help the paint settle down towards the bottom and then let them sit for just a moment before lifting them up off the canvas. I'm going to grab my corner catcher because I'm really liking what's going on in this bottom right corner. Then I'm going to put on some gloves before we start tilting this painting. All right, let's do this thing. I like to tilt my paintings pretty slow because that'll help stretch out the cells without overstretching anything or getting rid of stuff.
All right, here we go. Man, look at those cells and the lacing that's popped up from the background. I love that in my paintings. Comment below and let me know what you guys think. And be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can see what I've got coming at you next week. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.